book of acts chapter 15 verse 28 and verse 29 book of acts chapter 15 verse 28 and verse 29 if you didn't bring a bible with you just look to the screen for it seems good it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that you abstain from things offered to idols from blood from things strangled and from sexual immorality if you keep yourselves from these you will do well meaning it's going to be awesome for you now let me give you the background of this story the background is this the message of Jesus is being spread throughout of the world outside of Jerusalem and in Israel when people would receive Jesus and his message they already were circumcised after a few days of their birth and they stayed away from eating pork still went to temple to worship God and so for them Jesus was the savior but they still had certain rituals that they upheld as a Jewish people and they treated these rituals as part of their national cultural thing now because their religion their faith was Jesus the message of Jesus goes into Greece it goes into other countries and the Jewish people begin to say since you received Jesus you also have to receive the rituals of the Old Testament like circumcision like this and that you get you have to stop eating pork you have to stop doing this and so they started to bring their own cultural ceremonial laws upon the new Christians who were not Jewish and there was a big conflict because some people were saying well people who receive Jesus that's enough for salvation we shouldn't add other things to them other people were saying well we have to add other things to them because if they don't they're not going to really be saved so the whole church gathers together they have this big business meeting to decide whether you and I should be circumcised and I mean it was in a very important meeting you and I were not there but decisions were made that affects us today and during this decision all the apostles have agreed and the Holy Spirit was in this meeting as well and this is what they said it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden to you except these four things so for us it's not necessarily we don't need to bring a sheep we don't need to kill an oxen we don't need to bring a dove to God as an offering for our sins but that is handled on the cross but there is four things that the Holy Spirit wants a new believer in Jesus who is not a Jewish person to keep in mind the interesting part all of these four things have to do with your physical body three have to do with your diet and one has to do with who you're sleeping with first three don't necessarily apply to you because I'm assuming there's no vampires here abstain from things offered to idols most likely this is not really applying to you because physical idolatry is not fully practiced in our culture as it is practiced in other cultures what they're saying is that when there is food that was dedicated to a certain demon and it's given to you say well this was dedicated to the demon could you you want to eat this and they're encouraging us saying don't eat that that's not good makes sense then blood so when you see food and there is blood in it in the food uh, don't drink it it's common sense don't drink blood it's bad for you and then it says things strangled it's again because the blood is within the animal when the animal is strangled and so the bible always commanded and encouraged concerning our diet is that we don't drink blood or anything that has blood in it because life is in the blood and we don't need to do that so you're like looking at these three things you're like check 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 well that's really easy I'm not gonna eat anything offered to idols can don't even know where to find that I won't drink blood for sure I don't eat strangled animals they offer to me on the plate the animals completely dead because only I get the meat in the restaurant completely fine and then there comes the the last one sexual immorality like okay that's a tough cookie because <laughs> what is that supposed to mean and sexual immorality is really defined by two, two, two main sins fornication sex before marriage and adultery sex outside of marriage that is really the definition of sexual immorality I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit is concerned with what you do with your body I want you to see that your body is of high importance to the Holy Spirit 
that the first three things he mentioned had to do with the person's diet and the last one he mentioned had to do with the person's body what they do with it in relations to other people I believe if this would have been written in 21st century it would have said that the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to eat at McDonald's drink monster drinks energy drinks and go to gym the Holy Spirit would want you to do that but in that culture this was what was written but one thing that applies to us today that apply to that culture is the issue of sexual immorality I want you to register in your mind your body is concerned Holy Spirit is concerned with your body I want you to see another thing in this verse is that the Holy Spirit has no desire to lay a burden on you by putting restrictions on your life in the areas of sexual purity many people when they hear the message of purity and they hear the message of being pure in relationships they immediately get defensive and they feel like a boring god wants to make a life on earth boring for his kids so that heaven will be something that you get rewarded for living suffering in your boredom as a Christian on earth. Holy Spirit has no desire of burdening your life. By asking you to live pure, by asking you not to sleep with your girlfriend or your fiance, by asking you to stay clean in your body from things like abuse of alcohol, uh, smoking and hurting yourself physically or doing all of these things, he is not wanting to burden you. He wants to bless you. He is interested in your well-being. Amen. To walk in purity, to walk away from sexual immorality requires more than just knowledge it requires a revelation and most importantly it requires actually a certain level of freedom tonight i want to just bring up four basic simple things that have to do that rob people from walking in holiness these things sometimes we actually won't even think that they rob would rob us because you know we're like okay I know who robs me from walking in holiness it's the internet and my girlfriend but internet is not really your problem there was no internet during these days and they still walked in sin and you don't need another person to walk in sin the sin nature is within us and we are going to talk about some foundational truths that will help us to walk in righteousness and to help us to walk in holiness if you can bring the first point up don't go swimming if you are bleeding don't go swimming if you are bleeding what does that mean when a person is insecure in themselves when a person has a low self-esteem and they go into the pool of relationships or they go into the world of relationships they are like a bleeding person in the ocean full of sharks what happens with a person who is insecure first of all what happens with an insecure person is they will always attract people who will use them instead of loving them when you are bleeding in the ocean you will not attract dolphins you will attract sharks who love the smell of blood when a young lady is insecure and she goes into school she is a bleeding person in the ocean and all the sharks will smell it because insecurity is something that a vibe people can feel and that insecurity attracts guys who don't have high standards but guys who have low standards and you will fall for it because you're insecure looking for attention and feeling like if I give him my body he will give me what I want not realizing he won't give you what you want he will take what he wants and leave you alone when you are insecure when your low self-esteem is low you will have low standards low standards are not a result of not looking good it's a result of not feeling good on inside and there are people who look good but feel good feel not good there are people who look great but on the inside they feel terrible they feel unworthy 
they feel ugly and they do not feel like they got what they really wanted in their life attention their appreciation and what they would do is they are bleeding person in the ocean of relationships not realizing i'm only attracting guys who want to get me off of my pants in the bed and then leave me alone and you will see a beautiful young lady constantly attracting jerks and you say what you know you you're a good girl you're a good guy why would you always those kind of guys are attracted to you and if you talk to that person you will find out there is a reason why sharks are on your tail you're bleeding and just because you're hot and cute that doesn't mean you're not insecure because cuteness and hotness and beauty and appearance does not cure insecurity only Jesus does that having biceps and triceps and being buff and tough even to make money does not cure your insecurity it could numb it for a moment but insecurity is truly fixed at the foot of the cross and it is dangerous to be bleeding and to go into the pool of relationships because you will only attract people who will use your body and leave you hurting you will hate the issue of love you'll be disappointed in love it's not love that's the problem there's always sharks in the world stop bleeding and they won't be on your tail and God wants us to have a self-esteem that is not low you may say walking in sexual purity and low and low self-esteem this has nothing in common until you see the ladies young men who let themselves go in the area of sexual purity you will see one air one common denominator low self-esteem brings low standards low self-esteem attracts sharks and low self-esteem dishonors God because when you look at yourself when you view yourself through how you were treated through the fact you didn't receive enough attention some people do not even like themselves physically you do not honor God by that it actually brings God a lot of dishonor and it brings God displeasure last Sunday when we were in Leo's and Larissa's house watching the Super Bowl game and there was a, a young man named Vlad and he corrected me first time in my life I heard a correction on my name he said you shouldn't be calling yourself Vlad and I was like who you think you are to tell me that I'm like everybody calls me Vlad he says Vlad the only people they can call Vlad is Vladislav and you're Vladimir I was like wow did not know that anyway so this real Vlad he was walking in the kitchen and he noticed my wife's painting that my wife gave to my aunt Larissa and it was hanging right there on the above the kitchen and this is the painting well except it was supposed to be flipped over other than that it's fine and so most of you know that my wife is a very talented painter she received awards even when she went to CBC the moment she painted the first thing in CBC the CBC right away bought it and stuff so she just has a grace on painting so she painted this and so he walked by and he's like wow that is an amazing painting now he did not know who painted that and so I'm sitting I'm like hmm so as he's talking about the painting I already found my wife's Facebook album of all her paintings and he's walking by and I was like come over here come over here real lad I was like I want you to look at other paintings I want you to notice that the painting never got proud when it was honored but it brought a lot of honor to the painter when the painting was not disgusted and you could have looked at something like, that's not good looking it's only because you don't understand about paintings mm -hmm. it brings glory to God when you look at yourself physically and you say God you made me good and if you look at yourself and you say I can't stand myself my physical features I just do not like myself and if you think that somehow brings the honor to God it does not you want to bring God glory look at yourself in the mirror and say God some days I look good but some days I look great and today is that day <laughs> amen somebody's like well after I get a plastic surgery no 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 after you get a plastic mind removal you change your mind and then God is gonna bring that change you have to receive yourself accept yourself today and raise your self-esteem why because when you raise your self-esteem your standards will be raised up as well 
when you raise your standards it will also raise your self-esteem it works both way for many people until they will raise their standards up their self-esteem will be lagging for others they need to raise their self-esteem up and their standards will be raised up the girls who are not committing sexual immorality are not because they're ugly they're not because nobody's hitting on them do you know why those girls are keeping themselves pure because they have a standards that the other people are lacking and do you know why they have those standards they have respect for who themselves why where do they get the respect from their creator if you want to be a person who walks in purity the first question you have to ask do I respect myself because God respects and loves me if you don't then you will live like a person who sleeps around with everyone looking for attention the more people you sleep with the worse your heart will be and yes you can use a condom to protect yourself from sexual disease but remember a condom will never protect you from a broken heart and a condom has never protected one person from demons or curses there is no protection from that and that's why the first thing must be fixed is your self-esteem must be raised up you no longer can look at yourself as worthless no longer can look at yourself as unworthy your body is very precious to God your physical features may not look as somebody on the magazine but your physical features is something that God loves he designed your body is what he created your body is what he heals your body is what one day the Bible says he will raise from the dead your body is what one day God will reward you for what you did in your body your body is what he purchased with his blood and your body is where the Holy Spirit lives did you say again your body is not important it's very important to God it's very important to God one of the first revelations as a young adult you can receive in your life is this is that the Holy Spirit fully likes and accepts my body yeah those ears that nose those lips those big eyes all of that you he loves the cure for low self-esteem is this is to know that your worth is determined by how you are loved not how you look your worth is determined by how much you are loved not by how you look when you were a little kid when I was a little kid up to the age of five you had the highest self-esteem actually till the first grade that you went in statistics says that most of us had about 90 percent 90 percent of us had a really good self-esteem until the first grade why because in the first grade you were con constantly focused on the fact that you were loved and you look at these little you know babies and everyone's like oh this is so cute but come on we all know baby is only cute because it's loved if I would give you that baby's face we would never call you cute the only reason the baby is cute is because it's loved and the baby feels complete acceptance until the first grade the statistic says by the time you get to fifth grade our self-esteem drops dramatically and when you graduate it drops so bad the amazing part is you learn how to walk, you learn how to drive, you learn how to speak. You got better and at the same time you got worse. Why? Because you shifted from how much you were loved to how you look, how you perform and how you behave and all of that. And God wants us to know that as you keep growing up and as your responsibilities increase, your eyes have to be fixed on how much God loves you at the cross is where you find your true value not at the mirror not at the weight scale not at the bank account at the cross is where you find how much you are truly worth not at how your skin is stretched over your skeleton at the cross you find how much you're truly worth if you go to the cross you will know your true value if you go to a guy who struggles with pornography to tell you how much you're worth you're going to a shark you're bleeding he will not tell you how much you're worth he will eat you use you and leave you hurt and abandoned you want to walk in purity stop bleeding 
deal with your insecurities if you are insecure constantly low self-esteem the last thing you need today is a relationship you don't need a boyfriend you need a savior you do not need another dating account on a dating side you need a discipleship on friday night you need deliverance you need help you don't the worst thing and you see these 15 year olds 16 year olds whose insecurities are more than than most of a combined and they're walking around looking for another boyfriend it's and you're seeing sometimes them you're like this poor little child swimming in the ocean and you see these sharks coming right after her and then heartbroken heartbroken children with this guy children with that guy one abortion that happening that happening you look man and then five years later the guys you sleep with you don't even remember their names why because you're bleeding you're cute but bleeding you don't need a boyfriend you need a healer you need someone to heal you and that healing is not in the gym well if I go work out in the gym and I look a little bit more better then I'm gonna feel better no 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 you need to go into the Word of God and change your outlook on yourself and then it will be amazing how all the jerks all the perverts will not even wink at you because you walk around healed with high standards because you have a high self-esteem and all the sharks he was like oh but they don't like me no more trust me you don't want their attention you don't need their attention let the sharks hunt the bleeding you are healthy you don't need the sharks you need some dolphins you're a good man you're a good woman can somebody say amen yes let's go right down point number two you can't walk far with baggage we can't walk far with baggage so we said that when we have low self-esteem because of our physical appearance that it drops our standards and our standards they disvalue God and our standards they attract bad people in our life you cannot walk far with baggage this applies to people who are single and this applies to people who are married people who are in a relationship baggage what I mean by baggage is the things done to you by people who were close to you and the things that were done to you were very hurtful baggage I don't mean by the things you've done uh, by the things people have done to you baggage is when at a very young tender age when a baby is still in the mother's womb and the parents cannot provide for the baby and they constantly walk around saying things like man this baby we should have not had this baby we, should, we don't know how we're going to manage and they constantly speak we don't want to have this baby whether baby realizes or not but the baby grows up with a spirit of rejection always feeling like I'm not loved everybody say well you're loved baby feels like I'm not loved it's a baggage sometimes that shows up when there is no dad in home you grow up without a father and it's not your fault but it's your baggage you didn't do anything wrong sometimes people grow up in a family or grow up in an environment where they actually get physically or if God forbid sexually taken advantage of and it's not your fault you didn't do anything and you might have a lot of questions why did this happen to me what did I do why did God allow this but the question the, the statement remains is that whether you like it or not it is your baggage that you cannot walk too far if you keep carrying that what happened to you is one thing but you carrying that into the next chapter of your life is completely another in my family we have a tradition and most likely in most of your families you have the same tradition where when you have carpet in the house and you walk in the yard you know taking care of the yard or moving some things and your shoes they pick up the dirt of the yard correct when you walk into the house how many of your house you have a policy to remove the shoes and you don't walk into the white carpet with the dirty shoes okay the rest of your house okay I'll keep that in mind I don't have to remove my shoes but in my house just like most of you you have to remove your shoes and we get very strict remove your shoes just you gotta remove your shoes why because the environment you walked in those shoes were for that environment you walked into a new environment that requires new shoes if I will come into your house into your bedroom that has a white carpet with my boots from construction walk on them and accept you to accept and love me just because I am your good friend you are going to overlook the fact that I am your friend and you're going to be bothered with the fact I'm wearing dirty boots on your carpet 
yet somehow we are completely okay when we walk into a relationship with dirty boots of the betrayal of our childhood abuse of our teenage years the hurt of that and that we walk with the baggage of our past into the relationships of our present and we wonder why problems we wonder why there's so many challenges you want to live in purity remove the baggage of your past how do you do that we all have certain certain baggage some people have a baggage if they will tell us the story here you'll be like oh my goodness I don't know how you're still living the cure for that is also at the cross of Jesus Christ how do you get cure for that it's when we look to Jesus and we see that Jesus was mistreated abused physically beaten emotionally betrayed he suffered mental anxiety because of the things done to him by the closest people to him and you quickly identify and you no longer look at Jesus as a man who's 33 years of age from Jewish state you're looking at Jesus who you say oh my goodness he feels what I feel but your connection is not just that he identifies with you it's the fact that you realize he didn't stay on the cross forever and even today we carry a crucifix that doesn't have a Christ on it it's an empty cross and you look into Jesus and say Jesus I've been hurt I've been abused things have been done to me I do not know how to handle how did you handle that and you're looking right at the cross Jesus looks down on you and he tells you when I was on the cross I didn't hate my haters I forgave people who called me with names who did such a hurtful things they beat me physically mercilessly they put crown of thorns in my head they ripped my beard the guys took fists and threw punches at me I forgave people who behind my back did business and used money to betray me I had people kiss me and call me friend and they backbite me and I forgave them it wasn't fair it didn't make sense it didn't look right it didn't feel good but I did that and because they caused wounds on me and I trusted God with it by saying God I forgive them God turned those wounds into scars and three days later I no longer had wounds that hurt I had scars that were a testimony and few days later God turned those scars into stars and no longer I am on the cross I am seated at the right hand of the Father so when you are hurt and bleeding, betrayed and abused, maybe being abandoned and forsaken, maybe bad things happened, somebody wasn't there who's supposed to be there, somebody dropped you who's supposed to carry you, look to the cross to see the best example how to deal with your pain. You don't look at the Hollywood movie. You don't look at some TV series which teach you how to pay back and how to be tough. No, no, no. You look at the man who was hanging on the cross and say, Jesus, the worst happened to you. How did you came back from the dead? Teach me, Jesus. Because I want to do the same. What is the solution? The solution is this. God will redeem everything he heals and God will heal everything you release. God will redeem everything he heals and God will heal everything you release anything you refuse to release to God he can't heal anything you hold on and say he owes me they owe me this is not right as long as you hold on to it God can heal it if you are releasing it saying Lord this is very painful God to go back to that it's very very hard it doesn't make sense I am not understanding but God I am letting you have your way I forgive it goes against common sense of my mind nobody does that but God I'm letting you have the way God heals what you release and what he heals he always redeems what do I, what do I mean by that he doesn't let you stay in a grave he raises you up and causes you not just to have scars but to have stars causes you not just to have a person who overcame your hurt but a person who uses that which the enemy used to destroy you you used it now to destroy him his kingdom and build your own life but that can never be until first comes the releasing the healing and then the redeeming releasing healing and then the redeeming amen. amen point number three 
raise your value by getting rid of salvage title raise your value by getting rid of salvaged title salvage title is what a car gets when a car goes through an accident and if you uh, are from the country that I came from most likely 95% of the chance you have a car with salvage title whether you know or not <laughs> If a Russian is selling you a car and it's not a salvage title, I would pray about it. <laughs> There's usually two things with the, with the Russian cars. I'm not sure about the Mexican cars, Russian cars. They usually the engine light is on. <laughs> because that means their dad was the one changing the engine <laughs> or messing with it. And there's a salvage title. But anyway, God is renewing our mind. We're going to prosperity instead of poverty. So most of the younger guys no longer have that issue. We're talking about us older folks. But the point is this, is that if you read in Encyclopedia, well, you don't have to read it anyway. You know that if the car has a salvaged value, and we have some people who work in dealership here, and you know this, the moment a car has been through an accident, even if you fix the car and a natural eye will never see the difference between a car that was in an accident and the car that wasn't in an accident. But once you look the title, the title doesn't lie. The title tells you this car is salvaged. You know one thing about salvaged vehicles, their value has to drop. They may still look good as the vehicles that do not have not been an accident, but because they have a salvaged title, just a title, memory, past, even if nothing is wrong with the car, nothing will ever be wrong. Salvaged title drops the value. This is very important please everyone listen to me very carefully when Lazarus died and went to the tomb Jesus raised him from the dead spoke a word Lazarus came out and when Lazarus came out he came out wrapped with grave clothes and Jesus said hey guys you gotta lose Lazarus why because as long as he has the grave clothes they would they tied him up and he's alive but he can't move very far Many of us here who come to Jesus Christ recently, most likely you were involved in activities that were not godly in the area of sexuality. And when you come you receive forgiveness, you receive God's justification. Whatever, what happens usually with people who receive forgiveness after sexual sins is they keep in their mind a salvaged mind. Salvaged mind means I am second. I cannot expect God's best because I'm not a virgin. I no longer expect God's blessings because of things I've done. I can no longer expect God to bless me with a wonderful person because of my past. Oh Jesus has forgiven me. I have moved on but it has to be fair. I have to carry a salvaged title, a salvaged mind. And it's interesting that the moment you allow that thought is the very moment you drop your value. God didn't determine your value, you did. How? Because you allowed yourself to think God forgave for every sin and yes the memory remains and yes it's a fact that it happened but it is your choice in your mind to keep a salvaged mind or to keep a mind that says Christ has forgiven me, He has washed me and the Bible says I am a new not salvaged person. It's your choice. You can be forgiven by Christ walking out of the grave but if you have the mindset I am salvaged. I've done a lot of things and that is in your glove box. Your value drops and you will settle for anything as long as they could live with your salvage title. Trash the salvage title. Loose yourself. Loose yourself from the savage title because it's in your head and as long as it's in your head your value drops. Sometimes people say like well I've been divorced so I'm not one of the good people. Really? That's a savage title. Well I have two kids and I don't have a father. Okay. That means I don't deserve a great relationship. Who said that? That's a savage title as long as you think like that God doesn't think like that God doesn't want you to think like that God says loose Lazarus 
because these clothes belong to the man who was dead and Lazarus is no longer dead he shouldn't act like he's dead you have to put on new clothes when you receive Jesus when you come to the cross you have to in your mind allow Jesus to take the salvage title and put it at the foot of the cross and pick up in your mind a new person this is not excuse to do what you want this is power not to do stupid things again because people with salvage titles drop their value and when they drop their value they drop their standards this has nothing to do with you walking around and feeling good. This is about you walking around and not doing same foolish things. Why did Jesus give the woman caught in the act of adultery the gift of no condemnation? Because no one can walk and sin no more until they have the gift of no condemnation. The Bible says, if you can put up that verse in Corinthians, if you have it, for those who are in Christ, in 5.17, if anyone to be in Christ they are a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new if you have a salvage title I want you to reach out into the glove box of your subconscious and replace that title with this verse because both things are true what you are saying about your past is a fact what God is saying God is saying about your past is also a fact whose report are you going to believe God's report looks better let's believe God's report can somebody say amen trash the savage title receive the new subconscious God has made me new I believe in that I will walk in that and everything is going to be better in my life the last thing clean out your closet from skeletons to walk in sexual purity we mentioned the first thing is that we have to stop the bleeding we mentioned the second thing we have to deal with our baggage number three we mentioned we have to deal with our sinful subconscious about the salvaged mindset kind of like I'm not good enough I've done some sins I can no longer deserve anybody good because of my past you know Rahab has done a lot worse but the difference between Rahab and a lot of Christians is that when Rahab moved to Israel she didn't even know about Jesus but she knew about God who forgives and restores and the Bible calls Rahab a woman of faith you know what that means in her subconscious he, she didn't carry shame and condemnation of her prostitution she carried faith and boldness of her mighty God guess which kind of man she married a spy whose name was Salmon people like that who are spies they're highly noble people very trusted people these are not anybody guys these are very trusted guys how could a prostitute marry someone of such a high character because a prostitute inside of her when she switched from her past life to her new life she didn't just switch it physically she switched it mentally if she could do it in the nation then you can do it in God's grace today switch in your mind it's all in your head today your salvage title is in your glove box you can throw it away the salvage title is if you, is your grave clothes if you remove it layer by layer and begin to feel yourself saying you know what I know I've done this I know I've done that I know I've done but Jesus says I am a new creation and I am gonna live by that I'm gonna see myself like that I will not settle for anybody who just winks at me my value is high because Jesus paid it on the cross for me and you'll be surprised how God will bring men and women man or a woman into your life that will be highly respected and blessed somebody say amen we don't need men and women <laughs> no polygamy allowed bible says you can't serve two masters just one number four clean out your closet from skeletons and so the last thing that i want to share with you tonight is that if you want to truly walk in sexual purity the goal is not just to put on your computer a software that will control your behavior the goal is not to just simply I want to change my friends I want to stop going to these places those things are good the goal is not just I want to unfollow everyone on, on Instagram that's causing me to tempt and sin that is good one of the biggest things that people quickly do not focus on when they talk about sexual purity is dealing with skeletons skeletons are demons and demons are not just portrayed in Hollywood movies to scare, scare people and draw the attention of people who like uh, spooky stuff. Demons are real. 
they torture people they hurt people and they are behind repeated cycles of sin when somebody commits sin and they keep committing the same sin it's no longer just an issue of discipline it becomes the issue of demons and when a person keeps trying their best without dealing with the spiritual forces very soon this person will realize I can't do it and they'll give up and people will quit and they will say well there's nothing I can do about it the Bible says our fight is not against flesh and blood our fight is against spiritual forces that fight against us that says in the New Testament demons are real the Bible says there's demons of fear see there's normal fear like jumping from the fifth story building if you're afraid that's normal if you're not afraid not normal but a fear when you're alone in the room and things close and open and you wake up in a cold sweat because something tortures you and scares you that is no longer an emotion it's a demon sometimes the Bible says there's a spirit of heaviness where the person is not just having a hard day and they just need to drink a little bit of coffee and relax but no matter what happens something there's just heavy person it's not just an emotion and popping pills will never cast out a demon and here you are a lovely person found a beautiful young lady at work found a beautiful young lady on the internet going out with her now realizing that behind her beautiful looks are also demons demons of loneliness her mom was always lonely she died lonely her grandma was always lonely and no this wonderful young lady is very beautiful but you don't know the skeletons the demons there and when you get together she doesn't feel loved she doesn't feel always you're like I'm doing all of these things why is this happening to you and then you become angry at her because you don't understand spiritual world you're fighting her instead of fighting the skeletons you destroy the relationship instead of destroying demons because typically what we do in Christendom today is instead of fighting the enemy we make people our enemy instead of fighting the demon of anger we fight the person who has that demon and we destroy the person without ever destroying that demon destroy the relationship kids suffer because of that and we live our life looking for another person every person you will meet has some kind of a skeletons you will need to be equipped by the Holy Spirit to fight with I didn't say to fight with the person to fight with the skeleton skeleton has a name and a skeleton has a nature it's a demon usually demons have four steps to possess people the first step is obsession it's when you get obsessed with something the second step is oppression it's the thing you're obsessed about begins to control you the third step is the depression it's when it weighs you down so deeply and it begins to define your life and when a person keeps staying on the third stage depression then comes the last stage possession when the person completely loses their mind and once in a while they think straight the other time you're talking to them and you're talking to a vegetable and usually in our culture we have clinics for that where we put them in there put them on medicine remember medicine does not cure demons only the Holy Spirit does medicine has its place it helps people and we are very grateful for it and we need to honor it but you have to understand when a person has a demon attacking and torturing their life no amount of medicine therapy or counseling will help they need to have a spiritual war and if you're in a relationship with someone like that hating the person will never help fighting the demon loving the person can bring the change maybe you're here today and you're realizing you have a skeleton maybe you're here today and you're realizing you have a demonic influence on your life that does not necessarily mean that you're crazy out of control it just simply means that you're a person who is already 50 percent of victory in your life if you have recognized that the other 50 is now fighting you know i grew up in a very christian home very lovely home i have both of my parents here my father and my mother at a very young age i was exposed to pornography without their knowledge 
it was an accident it happened at school and I was presented with that and at that moment when I, expo when I was exposed to pornography at a very young age very tender age I believe now looking back that's when a demon attached himself to me I didn't think much of it I did not understand the spiritual world I did not I grew up in church but I didn't think of these things until we came to the United States and few months into being in the United States I was asked to take care of the house of the neighbor didn't speak well English but I could understand how much he's gonna pay and what he wants me to do he left for a whole week we started to clean his house take care of his cats wash things rake the leaves everything and you know we've never uh, been into a house of an American person always wondered what they have in the closets and so my curiosity I got the, uh, got the hold of me and I started to open you know kind of he wasn't there so we didn't do anything just kind of opened the closet sneaked in how he lives and everything and uh, and I've realized in one of his closets he had a lot of pornographic videos and you know typically I should have been closed but I didn't close it and I started to watch that and I watched it maybe one or two and then the next day it happened again and I felt worse dirty I felt so dirty I cannot explain the feelings of dirt that I felt but the interesting thing is that after that something something else entered me that was not of Jesus I was still a Christian I still went to church I still raised my hands and I still prayed I still read my Bible and I thought I'm just simply a teenager fighting you know bad feelings toward sin and so I started to discipline myself in not eating every Wednesday and thinking if I'm gonna fast discipline myself and I'm getting on, on the right of it we didn't even have a computer in the house but I did not know that at that time as a teenager there was a demon on my tail he knew me and once a month no matter how hard I tried I had to fall into sexual sin of looking at pornography it got so bad until I realized I'm like I cannot control this this is out of my league and I started to go to my pastor and say pastor pray for me because I do not know how to stop this I was a disciplined person I was not sloppy I didn't play video games I didn't just watch movies all the time I was a very disciplined person for a person of my age but I couldn't control because no matter how disciplined you are if your problem is a demon your discipline won't work discipline only works on you it doesn't work on demons all the what works on demons is first knowing you're fighting with the demon and secondly fighting with the demon and until few years into it a book came into my hands what explained of an older person who was a minister who was struggling with certain lustful thoughts and how God led him that through some sexual encounters in his past he opened the doors for these spirits and they affected him and they would come in and come out come in torture him and leave him torture him and leave him and when God revealed that to him and he did a certain prayer and a light went on in my mind that I'm no longer fighting with the lust I'm fighting with spiritual forces and it took few months of even prayer and fasting I didn't do anything more than I did before but a revelation came I am no longer a pervert trying to stay pure I am a pure person fighting demons and I need to turn my heat against demons you know and maybe it's probably this year would be ninth or whatever year I lost count that God has gave me the grace and freedom from this issue today it's no longer an issue but before I couldn't control it. and so when I tell you that demons are real and they exist I'm not making this up people are suffering some people have this demonic curse on their life where they constantly have accidents no matter how good they drive they have accidents others of you you drive sloppy you never have accidents some people have this curse of cancer everyone in the family dies out of cancer it's a curse it's a skeleton and you have to deal with that I'm not saying that you you have to hate the person you have to recognize you're dealing with the spiritual force you have to deal with it spiritually maybe it's an addiction maybe it's a certain habit you cannot break please stop beating yourself recognize you have a skeleton deal with the skeleton with God's help and God will give you freedom and God will give you a blessing can somebody say amen if you don't deal with these things you cannot walk in purity if you deal with them you will walk in purity and I declare over your life you will be free you'll be walking in purity you will not be bleeding you will not be carrying baggage and you're not gonna be drowning in the ocean of insecurity can somebody say amen